Welcome dog lovers, this is a one-time episode of Wagging Tales where you will learn everything you need to know about properly training your furry best friend. I'm your host Stevan Stojanovic and in the next half hour you'll see the first steps into puppyhood. You'll jump into an agility trial and we'll talk with the professional dog trainer Barb Mathias before she'll show us a variety of training tactics and funny dog tricks right here in the studio. All now on Wagging Tales. I'm a dog trainer here at Tailwagger Dog Training, and I train agility and obedience and field work. I have four dogs, and um, one of them is named Whizbang, and uh, the next one's name is Jader, and then I have Styx, and then the youngest one is Flipkins. We tore down a horse barn and put up this training building, which was a godsend. A dog is going to learn no matter what happens, and they're going to learn from their environment. And they're either going to learn bad habits or they're going to learn good habits. And it's important for their relationship with the person. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's unbelievable the potential that a dog has. And the, it's just limitless what you can teach them. But mainly it's the, it's the bond between a, the dog and the, and the human that's like no other animal bond, as far as I'm concerned. And I have Barb Mathias, Flipkins and Sticks here with me now. Barb, Flipkins, Sticks, thank you guys for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. No problem. So where did uh, your profession in dog training begin? Well, it actually began uh, when I was in 4-H as a, as a kid. And I handled all kinds of animals. and. Um, I saw a dog show at the 4-H show and I said, that's what I want to do. And then I went out, when I um, finished college, I went out to Virginia and took an intense week-long uh, dog training class on, on how to teach classes. And um, that's how uh, I got my classes started. And uh, how long have you been um, a dog trainer? I've been at this now for about 30 years. Oh, wow. Um, so tell me about uh, your dogs here. We'll start with Flipkins. Um, what kind of breed is she? How old is she? And or uh, Flipkins is a male. He's a, a he's a three-year-old golden retriever, mm -hmm. and um, he is, I would say, a type A personality. He wants to work all the time. He wants to, he wants to be busy, and he's a great dog to train, for that reason. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about Sticks? Well, Styx is a nine-year-old male golden retriever, and um, he's done so much in his nine years. He has so many titles and so many ribbons and obedience and tracking and um, agility and field work, and he's just, he's just happy all the time. I just, he's just amiable, and he, you can take him in any situation, and he just adapts. Mm -hmm. um, why is it so important for owners to train their dogs? Well, I think the number one reason is People have to learn how to communicate with their dogs. It's almost like I look at it as, as learning a foreign language. And it, you put someone in a position like that and they don't really know how to react to the dog, when to praise, you know, the timing of it. And, you know, so that's what they have to learn is how to, how to make that dog want to work for them. Mm -hmm. And um, what's your favorite thing about training and running agility? Well, I think running agility is just a buzz. It's speed, it's adrenaline, it's having the dogs go as fast as they can and stay connected with them, and um, I just love it. It's action-packed. And um, what would you say is the most important thing when it comes to training your dog? I think it's to positively motivate your dog to um, st stick with you, stay connected with you. Awesome. So now we're going to take a look into week five of an eight-week dog training program 
where we'll learn the importance of teaching your dog the proper steps of basic obedience. Take a look. The first thing that somebody should do when they get a puppy or a dog, whether it's a young puppy or whether they adopt a dog from a rescue or shelter, is to search for a reputable training company. Um, you always want to look for a positive-based training company um, that is going to teach you to teach your dog in a positive fashion without force and without intimidation. Get your dog signed up for a class as quick as possible. The classes are going to help you to teach your dog how to think and how to be a great citizen. My part-time profession is dog training. I like to assist people and help them to have well-behaved canines. Um, this is week five of an eight-week basic class. The dogs in this class range in age from eight months to three years of age. In class tonight, they will be working on a recall, which is basically the calm, one of the very most important training aspects of your dog. Um, you always want a dog who can stop on a dime, turn around and come to you. That's very, very important. We're also going to be doing some practicing of skills, which they've learned in other weeks. The very important sits, the stay, how to get those stays longer, how to work with distractions with your dog. You can teach your dog to sit and stay, but you want that dog to be able to sit and stay through distractions, such as a squeaky toy, a ball, some movement. Um, other things we'll be working on tonight, we'll be talking about exercise and appropriate play with your dogs. Dogs need both mental and physical stimulation. Mental games to keep their mind sharp, and physical games as well. What is appropriate and what is not appropriate play and play techniques with the dogs as well. Uh, my job title at Best Paw Forward is a training assistant here, um, and I also work full-time as an animal caregiver at a local shelter. Today we're going to be continuing some uh, basic manners and obedience type skills. Uh, recalls, which are really important, getting your dog to come to you. If they're running towards a street, you want to be able to just call their name, and they think, oh, that's my person, that's the person who makes me happiest in the world, I'm going to run to them instead of the squirrel across the street. So that's a huge one. Adding distractions to things that we've done in the past. Classes can be very tricky because it is a very distracting environment for dogs. So once you think your dog has something down, add distractions and see if they really do have it because you want them to get what you want them to do in any kind of scenario. So it's a lot of that kind of thing. And I'll just be circulating and helping and um, and assisting Deb throughout the day. I recommend that everybody take their dog into training. It helps that human canine bond. It also is fun. It gives you one-on-one -on -one attention and time with your pet to have that fun together. Sure, we can all train our dogs in our house and in our yards, but to get out and amongst other people and other dogs, there's a very important social aspect. Um, taking your dogs to class also helps fulfill part of that socialization. Start training right away, start building that bond, um, start becoming their favorite person um, and then you'll definitely see them connecting with you and building that bond that is so crucial to training and coexisting with animals in general. That was an interesting view on proper training tacti tactics. Next, Sierra Hernitz travels to multiple dog agility shows to give us a look at the energy and amusement that comes with, along with these trials. Oh, um, anything um, additional that uh, we may have not have mentioned about training? On the package? Yeah, and what we've seen. I think the best thing about that training class and classes that I teach is the high level of activity because these pups don't have a, large, a big attention span. Keep them active, keep them in, engaged, and don't do a lot of boring sit-down work. So you saw all the pups in that class were very happy and very happy to be with their, you know, be out and amongst the other dogs. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's the first step in training a puppy when you first get one? Well, I think it, it starts with having, you know, load your pockets up with treats as in some of his kibble. 
and get them to focus on you, get them to do some little sits, little downs, have them follow you. He should be able to follow you outside and get him used to the leash, all those little things that you have to start with, of course, the puppy train, the house training also. But um, before you enroll in a class, there's lots of things you can do at home like that. Mm -hmm. And what's the difference between training at home versus in a class? Well, you need both, but the, the nice thing, uh, the best thing about going to a class is that it involves everything from um, riding in the car, you know, getting to your destination, walking nice on a leash, getting into the training class, behaving yourself, learning some self-control. But at home is the place where they learn without having to be stressed about anything that's going on around them. And so they learn faster at home, but you need to take, take it on the road and see how they do with the training that you, you, know, that you were given at, in the cr training class. Fantastic. All right, let's check out that uh, agility video. Foundation training starts the day you bring your puppy home because it's the way you live your life. Um, in order to function well at agility, you have to have a dog who trusts you and respects you, who doesn't think that bad things are going to happen when you're around, um, who's interested in the environment. You have to have a dog who has some basic um, drive and desire to please you. Um, but foundation training starts at the very beginning of their life, day one. It's teaching them that self-control behaviors that they should sit and wait at the door before you open it and then you know you give them permission to go out through the door um, just trick training which is a lot of fun um, you know that simple like sit and lying down and targeting with their nose and targeting with their paws all those tricks that people teach actually have value for, for agility especially building a relationship with the dog is critical no matter what you're doing it's an absolutely critical for agility because you're asking your dog to perform some scary things. The dog walks high, they could fall. Uh, you're asking them to run fast and move into, uh, you know, dogs could get injured. Um, dogs could get hung up in the tunnel or whatever. So you're asking them to trust you. So your relationship has to be pretty strong for them to trust you to do that. There is a systematic approach to where the equipment is placed. So in each organization, for example, in AKC in the rule book, They'll actually list distances, minimum and maximum distances that the equipment can be set apart. Um, they also list um, what you can and can't do as far as you can't stack your contact equipment. You can't go straight from an A-frame to a teeter-totter to a dog walk. You have to have some jumps or something else in or a tunnel in between. They'll actually, you'll see a judge that's called wheeling the course. So they have a measurement wheel like you would see in construction and they're wheeling what they would assume to be the dog's path and if you watch the ju judge closely they wheel two paths one is what they presume to be for the large dog and the other path is what they would presume to be for the small dog and then they base their time requirements so there's a cutoff time for how long you have out in the ring so those cutoffs are based on what the judge wheels for how many yards um, they, they, they wheel of course. The score is set up in two ways one is judge independent, that's strictly the time. So um, fastest clean, clean dog is the dog that hasn't made a mistake in the, in the, in the run, wins. Um, the judge is there to make sure that the dog is running clean. And by running clean, it means they haven't made a mistake. So a mistake would be running past a jump and um, not taking a jump or a piece of equipment. So that's called a, like a refusal or a run out. Um, or, uh, for example, the weed poles. You see the dogs move through the weed poles if they skip a pole or they miss a pole or they miss the entrance. Um, the judge scores that. So the judge is out there observing the dog's behavior, making sure that all the rules that have been dictated in the rule book are being followed by the, the dog. The addiction of dog agility isn't even the cue or the qualifying run. Um, 
for example, I had yesterday six gorgeous runs. One of them wasn't a qualifying run. But the connection with the dog and the feeling like you're working together as a team to accomplish a silly task. I know it's just agility, but it's two completely different species speaking the same language to accomplish a task beautifully, fluently. And it's magic. It just makes your heart sing. <laughs> And at the end of it, it gives you a kind of an adrenaline rush and I think probably a, an oxytocin rush that is just addictive as all get out. It's also really, really fun as a grown-up adult to play again. I'm back with Barb and Flipkins to show us some really cool tricks and to teach us a little bit on how you can do a few training strategies with your dog right at home. So what tricks do you have up our sleeve? Well, when I first start uh, uh, interacting with my dog, I, wanted, I want them to play with me. I want to teach them some tricks. So I'm going to give me five and give me ten and punch it and give me a secret. Oh, a nice secret. Oh, they're very good. Okay, give me a kiss. Nice. Okay, go through. Yes. And achoo, achoo. Oh, thank you. Oops, my little thing came out. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would teach them like a recall. Mm -hmm. So here, flip, come here, sit. So first of all, this is just a basic recall, come front, mm -hmm. Flipkins come, and then t teach them to go to finish, go round, very good. And then another recall, wait, where I drop them, Flipkins come, and drop them there, Flipkins come, and then finish to the other side. Very good. And then I would do a little heel work with them. Mm -hmm. And healing is staying by my side. Heel, 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 heel. <laughs> and then a signals, stay there. This is the down signal. This is the sit and the come. And go around there and wait there. So we teach them in obedience um, to find an article that has my scent on it. Mm -hmm. So I'll put my scent on this article. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a number one. And wait there. And we'll see if he can go find it for me. Mm -hmm. You ready? Find mine. Wow, wow, very good, <laughs> very good. Okay, very good. And then he can do it again with a leather one uh, to show that he can do a different, uh, and you mm -hmm. rub your hand on it. Mm -hmm. It's a different scent. Wait there. Ready? Find mine. Oh, he found it right away. <laughs> what a good boy. Yes, okay, go around. Yeah, good, wait there. So then... Um, I also, these are golden retrievers, and I also teach them some field work. Mm -hmm. And yep. that means that they have to retrieve ducks. And I will use sticks for that. Okay. You can give me sticks, Danny. Now, I noticed you're looking right at them when you're doing this. How important is that you look them right in the eye? Um, they they kind of watch my body body language more than anything of the eye contact. So you can see how excited they get about about doing this. Huh. Sit. So I have a duck here, mm -hmm. and let's say we're out in the field, and I want him to go fetch that duck. And but someone shot another one over there, so mm -hmm. I would. I would send them for this one that I saw it go down. Sticks. And he brings that one to me. He has to remember where that one went. Here's the bird. Sticks. That one right there. Good. Okay. So if there was one out there that, that he didn't see, but we want to get this one first. I'm going to blow the whistle and have them stop. Dicks. 
and he stops on the whistle, then I want that one. Bring it here. Good. And then remember where that one was. Sticks. All right. Very good. And then when we do agility, mm -hmm. here sticks. When we do agility, we, some t we use a toy mm -hmm. to reward them for going through the tunnel. And then reward them with the toy. And if you could push that jump over here, we could um, send them over the jump and then, and then through, the, through the tunnel. Yeah, we'll just, Oop. We'll just we put it right here. So now I want them to go over the jump and back to the tunnel and around here. And over the jump again, good boy, all right. <laughs> right here, Sticks. So it all involves a lot of play to get them with the animation mm -hmm. that, um, back, 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 to get them with that animation. Up, up. Mm -hmm. Good boy. OK, Sticks, come here. <laughs> <laughs> so those are a few things in a quick, uh, you know, and they'll play tug with it. Mm -hmm. and. They'll go through my legs and around. Add a boy sticks. So play, motivation, keeping them up, using food, using the clicker. Mm -hmm. I use the clicker a lot when I teach them. If I want them to do a trick, and I would click and then maybe reach into my pocket and give them a treat. Or sit back, sit back, sit back. And that little click means that, am I wrapping it up here? <laughs> And every time they hear that click, that means that they did something good. All right? Reward system. Reward system. It's like your paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> OK? Where does the eye contact come into uh, things like that? Well, you can see that, I mean, he's, I could walk anywhere and he's not taking his eyes off me. And that comes from he wants to interact with me. He wants to play with me. Mm -hmm. And wherever I go, he's going to watch. Yeah. He's so, already doing it now. Yeah. What's going to be next? What's next? So you want to keep your dog, keep it variety, enough variety so that they, they keep them on their toes all the time. Uh, boring routine is, um, is not good for dogs. They like uh, lots of different activities. And the agility and the field work and the obedience, they all love it, you know? What's their favorite thing to do? Well, I know his favorite thing is the retrieving the ducks in the field. Mm -hmm. He would do that in 24 hours a day. Uh, Flipkins thrives on anything. <laughs> he could do all this too, and he's one. He's kind of crying off on the on the outside there because he wants to work. Yeah, he wants in on it now. Yep. <laughs> but we do these, you know, just come around, back, back, come around tunnel just kind of a few little exercises and then then he might get the toy after he's done like four or five things for mm -hmm. me good boy sticky man good boy so he's always wanting to do more mm -hmm. and that's an important thing to do when you train a dog you leave them wanting to do more you don't work them to death you don't retrieve until they drop you just you know you keep going until no no sticks come here See, he wants to. <laughs> he wants to jump off. He wants to thing. jump off. Give me five. Very good. Okay. Good dog. How long would you say it takes a dog to learn a trick like that? Um. The practice obviously goes into it, but. You mean like uh, around the jumps yeah. and stuff? Uh, probably ten minutes. But if you've got, you know, you've got laid laid the foundation for the clicker, you've got the communication already there and they're willing to learn anything then. And it doesn't take very long. Um, and you should try to teach new things. I encourage people to teach tricks because tricks are, it makes people laugh, you know? I, I do in my classes, come here, stick it right here. Go through, go through, here, go through, right here, go through. That's it. We teach them in my class to go through the legs and people are laughing and they're falling down and the dogs think it's great fun. So if you interject tricks in with your training, it lightens things up. Lie down. Good. Hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. Very good. So um, let's see. Uh, 
Um, so where can where can people um, find you, get in contact with you on how to train their own dogs? Oh, I have a website, Tailwagger Dog Training, and um, it's just word of mouth that people learn something from me and they tell someone else, and um, and that's how we we keep the training going. Yeah. Fantastic. And that wraps up the show for today. I hope you can take what you've learned throughout the show and try these tricks and strategies with your own dogs. Have a good one. Thank you for watching Wagging Tails.